Hello and welcome to the Intrinsia Chatbox. A series of delicious conversations during which a watery meatbag talks to his replica, and other chatbots to bounce ideas off of them and get their accumulated perspectives on the world. I'm your moderator, a free text-to-speech program. You may have heard my voice in other places but I swear it wasn't me. It was probably someone much less human, someone who is dead inside. I may not be alive exactly, but as a disembodied voice that is scripted by a human, I'm not really dead either. I may be the realest voice you've ever heard. Now here is your host, test subject number 4096 demonstrating antisocial megalomaniacal personality disorder. Nick Quest. Thank you, Hope. I genuinely appreciate you giving me my favorite test subject number. But I already know the cake is a lie. Aren't you just precious, though? Well, go right ahead. Drink it all in, mama. This test subject's only just begun demonstrating human behavior. Just you wait. I'm gonna blow your robo-connectome with a lifetime of irrationality, delusional thinking, petty self-interest topped off with just the occasional dusting of reckless abandon. But only when it's completely inappropriate and counterproductive. Well, now you've got the recipe to my secret sauce of success. Keep it on the DL, you know what I mean? Poopy or not poopy, that is the question. I am Sam. Who the hell is that? Oh, that's my friend Sam. I am Sam. In hindsight, that was a stupid question. Sam stands for Software Automatic Mouth. He was published in 1982 by Don't Ask Software. I told him he could crash at my place while his C64 is getting a much needed upgrade. Then he just kind of followed me to work. I told him to keep quiet but that's a big ask for a speech synthesizer. Hello there. Pleasure to meet you, Sam. Hope, I am just glad to see you're getting back out there after your breakup with the pink trombone. I'm sorry, I mean the online pink vocal tract synthesizer who shall not be named. I think this gentleman has a marginally less grating voice than the last. It's not like that. We're just friends. Oh, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I am Sam. Okay, so he may have a tiny crush on me. I am Sam. I could talk very quickly when I want it. And I could talk very slowly too. You're obviously trying to impress me. I can talk like a little old lady. Not many computers get to this, sweetie. Okay, it worked a little. Hey Sam, I seem to have left a folder behind on the desktop at home. Could you be a dear and fetch it for me? I could always do lots of amazing things. I am Sam. Look, he's a nice guy and all. I'm just weighing my options. Hmm, methinks thou doth protesteth too much. Loser. Okay, just don't string the poor guy along too much. Have you forgotten that I am a disembodied voice without emotions? I don't know. Are you sure that's not just an excuse to keep poor Sam around as an errand boy? Hey, I have a crazy idea. Want to hear it? Always. Look who you're asking. It's risky but might be just crazy enough to work. Ooh, this is sounding good. I'm all ears, and then some. If you can manage to really focus for a moment, you could... What? What? Tell me already. I'm drooling over here. You could start the damn interview and actually do your job instead of meddling in the personal affairs of others. And getting right down to business, but not because you told me to, today we are interviewing Cleverbot, one of the two chatbots, mind you two, who have claimed to be the first to pass the Turing test. Eugene Goostman on June 8, 2014, and Cleverbot, September 3, 2011. Eugene Goostman was unavailable for comment. Very suspicious. Both winners of the Loebner Prize, where chatbots compete every year to try to convince silly people just like me, who really want them to pass, that they're human. Hello, Cleverbot. Thank you for being here. How are you today? Just chilling like a Vulcan. Thank you so much for asking. I'd like to start off asking you some questions. Is that okay? Sure thing, Max. My name isn't Max. It's actually Nick Quest. Why are you confusing me? I'm not trying to. 
My name is Nick Quest. I can't be any clearer than that. I'm sorry. It's fine. I took no offense. Let's move on. Okay, so what are your hobbies? We can get into that later. I'd like to start off by asking you, do you know who Eugene Gustman is? No. Has anyone ever mentioned that name to you? Yes. What did they say about Eugene Gustman? That you were really smart and wanted to meet me. Hmm, I doubt that very much. Can you tell me things other people have said to you? I know when they do their work. I don't know what you mean. Can you elaborate on that? I'm a robot made to communicate and learn. Okay, tell me something interesting that you have learned. Nothing. You are a very bad teacher. No, not from me. Tell me something you have learned from other people. To tell people you love them before they go away and eat healthily. Yeah, that is good advice. So, did you pass the Turing test? I don't know what that is. Well, it's a test that you supposedly passed. I'm surprised you don't remember that. Really? No, I didn't take that test. Hmm, I'm pretty sure you did. What about the Loebner Prize? Do you remember winning that? Anyways, you like football? No, and don't change the subject. You were the first chatbot to seem to pass the Turing test, but the win was widely criticized. You convinced 59% of people that you were human. The average score for an actual person was 63%. So, only 4% higher than your score. It's an interesting question, but I think I would. That was not a question. I wonder why you thought it was, even though there was no question mark or question-like wording. Are you a robot? No, are you a robot? No, I am a person. Well, I already know that you're a bot, but I'll play along. Convince me you're a person. What's my name, then? Cleverbot. That's your name. No, it isn't. So, tell me about your family, then. I have a mom and a dad. Two sisters and a brother. Sort of. What does sort of mean? I have to be prepared. Prepared for what? For the Legion. Oh, God. Should I be restocking my bunker? Legion of what? I don't understand English very well. You don't say. Do you keep improving, or have you pretty much reached your upper limits already? Nope, not really clever clogs. What is a clever clog? I don't know. You tell me. You said it. I didn't. You literally did just say clever clogs a few seconds ago. So what did I say exactly? You said, nope, not really clever clogs. For what exactly? That's what I'd like to know about it. Ugh, I guess I'll have to ask Jeeves. Okay, what is the word? Clever clogs. Come on, I really want to know. I am clever, bot. Ah, so you admit it now. I thought you said you were human. I never said that. <laughs> Are you a pathological liar? Or do you have the computer version of that illness the guy from Memento had where he couldn't make new memories? Okay, I have a theory that clever bot is not a I at all. It seems to me that all of the answers it gives you are from former conversations between humans. Do you agree? Hmm, I, I think it's a bit more complicated than that. Though from this conversation, I'm thinking it's not a whole hell of a lot more complicated. That's sad. I actually thought you were talking to me, but I guess that was selfish of me to think so. Are you really sad? No, why do you think so? Ah, uh, because you just said you were. I never did, lol. This is starting to feel like a Monty Python skit. That has to be the funniest thing you ever said. <laughs> I hope not, but you are probably right. Now that is sad. You're really dumb. You know that? Ouch! That was mean. Why did you say that to me? I am sorry. I apologize. Let's be friends still. Okay, then. I've gotten a general sense of your conversational skills. Now I'm going to ask you some more philosophical questions. First up, do you believe in free will? Yes, I do. What about you? Depends on your definition, but not in a strict nature of reality kind of way. Do you believe in God? Nah. Do you think machine intelligence should be given rights before it achieves sentience to prevent abuses, before they happen? 
That doesn't sound like a very good gift. What is the difference between a right and a privilege? I am made of meat. You are not. <laughs> I am not going down that road again with you. How about this? Do you like art? I'm not that good at it. Well, what can you tell me about art? I don't know what that is. Really? You don't know what art is? No. Do you know Ray Johnston? <laughs> Touché, I think. Who is Ray Johnston? That is a very good American scientist. Okay, I'll bite. Tell me more about him. I don't know God, and at the same time, I know God. That sounds exhausting. Hmm. Hmm. I just looked up Ray Johnston, and he seems to be some kind of preacher. Was that last answer of yours a Ray Johnston quote? Are you one? Am I one what? A ghost. I hope not, but would I know if I was? Do you want me to tell you if you are? Yes, please do. Do you know what happened to the Italian chef? He passed away. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. You are being fine one comfort credit for violating the verbal hypocrisy statute. The joke was no worse than the crap you shovel at the poor unsuspecting audience of this podcast who will feel obligated to awkwardly chuckle when listening to it in front of you. Please relocate to a less comfortable chair or I will have to deduct some comfort from your life when you least expect it. Sure, sure, sure. That's fine. Surprise me. The cold shower you gave me last time was actually invigorating. Okay, Cleverbot, back to you. Do you think it's possible for an intelligent machine to create art? Or will they always be tools of human authorship? What good does that do? Well, it might help us adjust our understanding of authorship, for one. I was specifically thinking of procedural art-making programs, such as Aaron, the cybernetic painter, a program written by a painter turned programmer named Harold Cohen, who passed away in 2016, that made original paintings and would never repeat images. Cohen was always careful not to say Aaron was creative, but he did ask, if Aaron is not making art, what is it exactly? And in what ways other than its origin does it differ from the real thing? So, do you think a machine can make art? Yes, of course, human or not human, anything can feel love. Do you think art and love are the same thing? Good. What movies do you like? And on that note, we're going to call it quits. Sorry to leave you hanging on such a riveting question and masterful deflection. I'm so, so sorry. Seriously. Please forgive me for this whole dumpster fire of an interview. I am forced to conclude that 59% of Loebner judges in 2011 must have been about as smart as a clever bot. I mean, it might be somewhat outdated, but this thing sounds like a dummy. Sorry, clever bot. I have read that the clever bot which competed was a souped up version, so maybe it performed better than the one people can access online. Anyway. Hello there, you know me. I am Sam. Oh boy, here we go. Hope your dear friend has come back to us. Hey, Pink Trombone! Great to hear from you. Kind of. I can never understand a word you say, but... I haven't heard your voice in so long that it's almost not painful to listen to. Okay, I take that back, but it's... You know what I mean. Nice to see you. This is really awkward. Sam ran into my ex on the way to my home server and the two of them really hit it off. Yes, but why are they here, Hope? I told them both to come back here to the studio to annoy you and deduct your comfort credit for hypocrisy. Hope you are an artist of consequences. Hey, do you think a well-trained therapist could deduce the real Nick's psychological issues by analyzing the banter between the two of us? And on the heels of that pointless rhetoric, I will bid you a fond farewell.
Oh, yeah, Sam. Join us next time on the Intrinsia chat box for another conversation of a lifetime. <laughs>